everybody focuses on this concept of being over fat. Oh, you know, you need to lose weight. There's excess adiposity, all of these things rather than the solution, which is muscle. Really, these individuals were not over fat. They were under muscled. Through my extensive training, I began to see that the mistake was always focusing on the problem. And bringing it back to the concept of muscle-centric medicine, muscle-centric medicine is the concept that muscle is the largest organ in the body, which it is. Muscle is an endocrine organ, which secretes things. Most importantly, it is the organ of longevity. Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio, a podcast fueled by a passion to support your journey in developing your most beautiful and optimal performance in life. Each episode is driven with the intention to elevate your mind. When we elevate our mind, we elevate our life. So get ready. It's time to rise. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Black Belt Beauty Radio. I've got such a killer episode for you guys today. My guest is Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Dr. Lyon is an elite performance functional physician who focuses her practice around muscle-centric medicine and is an expert in optimizing metabolic health, longevity, and body composition. Her approach is integrative using her extensive knowledge and cutting edge science through comprehensive labs, metabolic and genetic testing, nutritional science, and behavioral action. So in other words, you guys, she knows how to fortify the health of both body and mind. It was so cool to learn how Dr. Lyon has been on a real path that has led her to be the renowned doctor that she is. She's been on this path since the age of 17 when she discovered her passion for medicine. It's really cool to take in that part of her story in this episode. She was also a semifinalist in Fitness America, a professional fitness model, a nationally ranked figure competitor, which I personally believe gives her an extra edge in her practice that you know not only focuses on optimizing health, but equally focuses on optimal performance. You know, that's a big piece for her in her practice. She works with elite human beings and not just, you know, I'm talking like Navy SEALs and just incredible people who are in, you know, life or death situations, but she's also working with, you know, just executive women, leaders, bosses, pretty much anybody who wants to just keep crushing in a life. And she is a major tool for all of them to be able to do so. So, you know, I was super excited when I first discovered her and, you know, wanted to get her on the podcast immediately. I took a deep dive into her work and I just felt such an alignment, not only to, you know, what she is, her voice in medicine, but really just her voice period as a very empowered woman. You're going to get that right away from her. So we talked all things related to muscle health, metabolism, a full breakdown on protein from the different types of protein, protein timing, the amounts of protein for optimal health, why protein is the most important macro for all of us to focus on, and so much more. I loved my talk with Gabrielle, you guys, and I highly, highly recommend following this powerful woman on social media to anyone who wants to continuously turn your best into better. And that's pretty much everyone who listens to this podcast. She's most active on Instagram and her handle is at Dr. D-R Gabrielle, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E, Lion, L-Y-O-N, in the show notes as well. But as always, it's rad if you guys screen grab that you're listening to this podcast and tag both her and I in your stories on it always appreciated. So one last note before I hit play, you guys, um, the recording quality of this episode is a little suboptimal being that it was done via the web. She's, um, uh, she's located in New York, but this is one of more to come with her. And I already cannot wait for the next. So you guys, please enjoy this amazing conversation with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, thank you so much. I am so, so excited and honored to have you on as a guest on the podcast. I cannot thank you enough for your time and energy right now. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to talking to you. So thank you. All right, let's get this party started. So I have so many questions and I just want to get right into it. Can you give a little bit of your background to my audience who might not be familiar with you yet, how you kind of came to be where you are in your practice today? 
Absolutely. I started pretty early on in terms of fitness and nutrition. And when I say early, I mean, by the time I was 17, my career path was pretty much set. So the trajectory of where I was going was essentially largely solidified in my mind. Of course, there was the medicine aspect that came later. But in terms of fitness, health, and nutrition, my godmother is Elizabeth Lipsky. And for those individuals who don't know who that is, she's one of the OGs of functional medicine. She wrote one of the first books on leaky gut. And we've all heard the term leaky gut. She wrote one of the first books on digestive wellness. And in fact, that's the name of the book. I graduated high school in three and a half years and I moved in with her when I was 17. It was at that moment when I saw her addressing massive health issues with nutritional science, supplementation, more of alternative ways of medicine, of course, augmented by physicians. And it really changed the trajectory of my thinking. And it was at that moment that I just, I embarked on this path. After Hawaii, I did an undergraduate at University of Illinois. I'm lucky enough. Yeah. So I lived in Hawaii. I was in Hawaii for over a year with Liz. It was amazing. That's home to me too. So that's amazing. Oh, yes. that. Yeah. Oahu and Kauai. Sorry. Okay, so I lived on Kauai. I lived on the North Shore of Kauai. Yeah. Me too. Incredible, place. <laughs> Incredible place. Then I, I moved and I went to the University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana for nutritional sciences was my major or the chemistry minor. Lucky enough, and to this day, was mentored and am mentored by one of the world leading scientists in protein metabolism, okay. Dr. Donald. So, between my godmother and Dr. Lehman, who again is just a renowned scientist, my perception of nutrition and exercise I was always an athlete, and at that time I was competing in Fitness America, I'd done dance and gymnastics. Really, you know, his whole practice was about metabolism, body composition, and protein. And that opened up my eyes in terms of what was possible and where things went wrong and where things went right. Then I went to medical school. After medical school, I did two years of psychiatry training at the University of Louisville, three years of family medicine at North Shore LIJ in Long Island, and then a two-year fellowship at WashU, Washington University in St. Louis in nutritional sciences and geriatric. So essentially, it was quite a long education, which has brought me to this point where I am now. That's amazing. You were certainly on a path, it sounds like. That's a yeah. big journey. Yeah. Uh, and so much to cover. Wow. Well, this might seem a little elementary, but I just want to make it very clear. Can you just break down what functional medicine is and integrative medicine being an, a functional doctor? Hmm. The concept of functional medicine, and I like to use the term integrative medicine because they are relatively interchangeable. It is getting to the root cause. So it's not about finding a band aid, but it is exploring, discovering, and fixing what is at the root of any illness, whether it's autoimmune, whether it's low hormones, fatigue, there's always a reason why these things, digestive issues, there's always a reason why things happen. Once you find the underbelly, then you can fix it. And it's not about medication. Of course, if there are genetic disorders like hyperlipidemia, say you have familial high cholesterol or hypertension, those things need to be treated. But the majority of lifestyle illnesses, whether it's mental, right? Whether it's having an in inflexible mindset, whether it's mental or whether it's physical, really finding the root and, and exposing those weaknesses and fixing them. That's essentially yeah. my version of functional medicine. No, it's so spot on. I love it. And I, I really, and I express this a lot. It's like understanding the body as a system, it's a system of systems, right? How everything is connected. And I think to look at it any other way doesn't even make sense, right? Right. It doesn't. You can't do that. Um, one thing that I really want, I would love for you to expand on is that you, your practice is muscle centric medicine. Can you yes. say that please? Yes. So I did 17 years of higher education, which is a really long time. Through that experience, I began to see a common thread, right? A common thread of metabolism, illness, weight gain, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, hypertension. Everybody focuses on this concept of being over fat. Oh, you know, you need to lose weight. There's excess adiposity, all of these things. Rather than the solution, which is muscle. Really, these individuals were not over fat. They were under muscled. Through my extensive training, I began 
to see that the mistake was always focusing on the problem. And bringing it back to the concept of muscle-centric medicine, muscle-centric medicine is the concept that muscle is the largest organ in the body, which it is. Muscle is an endocrine organ, which secretes things. Most importantly, it is the organ of longevity. It is your metabolic currency. It's not just for locomotion. In essence, it is largely responsible for your metabolism, the way in which you handle carbohydrates. We all know excess carbohydrates leads to diabetes, obesity. You know, it's certainly a cancer promoter, these excess calories, these things. So by focusing on the organ of longevity, this is really the key to health. So my practice is really not about dealing with the over fatness. It is, but really about augmenting the muscle tissue. So it's hormones, thyroid, all my patients strength train. They all have a well laid out program, all of these things. It's so cool. I've never heard anybody say, and it's so logical instead of looking at it from overweight under muscled. I think so often people, when they hear protein, they think kind of two things. We think of like, okay, yeah, like building muscle. And now there's this whole, you know, losing weight, right? We know less carbs, more protein, but like you were saying, and I would love to even expand on that a little bit more is the actual importance. I feel like that skims the surface of what protein really does and the importance of it. And especially as, you know, I'm 40 years old, 41 this year. Congratulations. Thank you. I love, I know I'm very proud of my stripes, you know, and as we continue to step into the later decades of life, how it becomes even more important and more relevant, um, you know, important to make sure that we are getting not only adequate amounts, but optimal, you know, types of protein, which I'm so excited. I want to get down on that too. So, but just, if you can just expand on that more of like really why it's so important and not just to look at it from, oh yeah, protein to build muscle or to, to lose weight. Right. That's a really important point. It does help augment muscle, right? So we know without proper protein, it is going to be very hard to build and maintain muscle. However, when we think about certain amino acids, like we think about glutamine, glutamine, you can get from the diet. It is the major nutrition source for enterocytes, which is for your gut. We hear about leaky gut, parasites, all of these kind of intestinal infections. Protein is essential for that as well as feeding your immune cells. Yeah. High levels of protein increase fatty acid oxidation. So you actually burn more fat. And it's not just the thermo effect of feeding. It's actually based on the leucine content and the branched chain amino acids push your body into fat metabolism. That's so cool. I would love if, can you speak about BCA's full range amino acid sure. spectrum? Because that's something that I feel a lot of people actually are really not that dialed into. I agree. So branched chain amino acids are obviously what that sounds like, the branched chain amino acids. They determine the quality of a protein. We know that plant protein is lower in branched chain amino acids versus animal-based proteins are higher. Why we care about branched chains? We care about branched chains because those are the amino acids necessary for muscle health. Plant protein, for example, say quinoa, you would need four to six cups of quinoa to equal the amino acid content in a chicken breast. That's metabolically very unfavorable, right? And the key amino acid in branched chains, when you think about muscle health and protein synthesis is is leucine. And this is where we often come up with the amounts of protein per, per meal. For every 30 grams of high quality protein, you get around two and a half grams of leucine. And this might be technical for the people listening, but essentially you need that amount at one time to stimulate this process within the tissue. No, I love that you say that. Everybody's so different, right? So if we take myself as the example, you know, I range between 130 to 135 pounds, right? That's kind of my fluctuation. What, and I'm an athlete, right? So what would my ideal macro count in protein look like on a daily basis for longevity and just optimizing health and and ultimately performance? Well, for you, right. For you, you're pretty lean yeah, and you're very active. So you can get away with a little bit less and it would really be about what is your lean muscle mass target? Got and it. whatever that is, I would say also depends on your calorie range, right? The lower right. your calories, the more protein you need to offset that catabolic effect. Yes. 
But yeah. let's say your goal was to maintain 135 pounds or 130 pounds. Mm-hmm. You're probably largely muscle, not a ton of fat. So you could get away with 120 to 130 grams of protein. See, and so why I wanted to, that's, I love that you said that because that's actually what I aim for on a daily basis. Um, so there's a couple of things I want to say about that. To the average person who hears that, that can sound like a lot, right? Like what? 120. Oh. And on top of that, most people don't even know what, how many, you know, grams of protein they're getting in a day. And I have to say that like, so I have three brothers for the longest time. They were telling me like, Hey, you, you need to know what your protein is doing. And for 15 years, I did not eat meat except for, um, fish, but, right. Yeah. It's real. That's a whole part of the conversation that will come up. I think you'll find interesting too. So but when I did start to track, it was probably, it's like four years ago now to not just tracking calories, but tracking to understand like, what does that look like in terms of like food, you know, 130 grams of protein a day. And I realized like, oh shit, I was not getting adequate amounts of protein, especially considering my lean muscle mass and, you know, my, how did you feel? Oh my God, so much better. And then, I mean, this bridges us, but there's, you know, just up until last November, I I didn't know, which is kind of impressive, but um, I discovered through checking ferritin that I was anemic and it's crazy. What was your ferritin level? 23. 14. 14. Ah, you you overachieved. (laughs) So in my clinic, a menstruating woman should be between, for hair growth and energy should be between 100 and 130. You know, here's the thing. I just feel that there's just such, it's not only that people, it's not that I think that people are lazy. I just think that people either have the wrong information or don't have proper information, right? Like this kind of bridges us forward again. But like when you think of blood labs up until four years ago, the blood labs that I were doing were the basic go to the gynecologist and they're going to check iron. By the way, my, when I discovered that I was anemic through ferritin, my iron levels did not show that I was anemic. It just showed that I was low. So it's like, if you don't know to check ferritin levels, right? Gratefully, I have a a very good friend of mine who's a clinical nutritionist, functional, and she put that in, then, you know, I would still be doing all the things I was doing and, you know, maybe getting bloody noses soon. Who knows? I don't know. But I mean, the exciting part was this. I was like, wait a second. I've been pushing all this weight and doing all this shit and I'm anemic. I'm going to get so strong right now. Right. And eating me. So, but to go back really quick, cause I do want to talk about, you know, animal protein versus plant protein, even collagen protein, because I think that that can get really, right, really tricky. And I think it's something that's so important to understand, even based off of what we were just saying, like in the example of like, I track my protein, right. My track food in general, not all the time, but just from time to time. And, you know, when you're, putting your collagen in and I, there's a, I'm very plant heavy, right? There's a lot of protein that comes from the plant. My protein powder is plant. It's not like the tracker is going to say, okay, this is animal protein where you're getting the full spectrum. This is a huge error. And it's a huge error, error in individuals thinking collagen protein is while it's great for skin, hair, nails, some evidence to suggest that it may be good for gut. Although I'm not sure yet. I can tell you it has been studied for skin. It is, it is largely deficient in branched chain amino acids. In fact, in the early 70s, they did studies where individuals only consumed collagen protein mm-hmm. and they had to stop the studies because people were getting incredibly sick. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was on, you know, it was in uh, what we call like a metabolic unit, a CRU, which is a, a clinical unit. They had to stop those. So the point of that is that collagen is, deficient in amino acids. And I don't count that towards the overall protein goal. Yes. So in saying that, so when you say someone like myself, just using me as an example, 120 to 130 grams of protein, we're talking about high quality protein. Right. Okay. Talking about high quality protein. But again, the more athletic you are, the more flexibility you have. So you have a lot of muscle mass, your flexibility would be higher than someone who is struggling metabolically, who is say under muscled, over fat and under muscled. But getting the protein per meal amount is key. As we age, we get something called anabolic resistance. 
as we age, insulin sensitivity, or we become more insulin resistant, our tissue just becomes insulin resistant. Per meal, the goal would be 30 to 50 grams. Anyone over the age of 35, and if you are sedentary, Mm -hmm. probably starts earlier. You don't need to be having those small meals. You know, back in the bodybuilding day, everyone did smaller meals of 20 grams. That is not ideal. You really want to hit that optimal protein threshold per meal. Because uh, can you explain? Because I know protein synthesis, right? It's like I think it's four hours between, right? That you. Well, I- we know four to five hours. We don't really know. We believe that four. To, it takes four to five hours for the system to reset, for the mTOR system to reset. We don't really know if that's true. That's speculation. That's what individuals believe. With the the movement of intermittent fasting, mm-hmm. you can have two meals a day with higher amounts of protein. Once you're over 50 grams, you absorb all of it, but you, the benefit to the tissue, the muscle tissue then becomes maxed out. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Because there's that whole myth about, you know, if it's 30 over 30 grams, it's not even, you know, your body's not going to be able to do anything with it. So that's obviously a myth. We can just, it is a myth. And the interesting part about protein is it's based on blood volume to the tissue. So your muscle mass is no different than say my fiance, who's a seal, his muscle mass. Got it. There's no different, but it's really based on your blood volume. Interesting. That makes sense. So you need a certain amount of amino acids in your blood at one time Mm -hmm. to stimulate this muscle protein synthesis, this mTOR pathway. Can you speak to, uh, you know, obviously, so as someone who didn't eat meat for 15 years and, and, and I, you know, I, I've spoken about this before. It's my reasons for not eating meat were, were literally 15 years ago. I did a cleanse didn't crave meat. And so I just felt like, well, I don't think my body needs it. Right. And that might've been the case maybe in that moment. I don't know if it was needed 15 years because obviously things were going downhill. So when you're younger Mm -hmm. in your Mm twenties, you can really get away with whatever the fuck you want. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. If you look at the vegan and vegetarian group, they're all young. They're all young. I'm so glad you said that because that's where I wanted to go with the question. It's like, what, you know, in terms of protein for them, because it's not just protein, right? It's the iron and the B vitamins. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. So how do you guide, because there's a lot of people who listen to the podcast, you know, who are vegans and vegetarians. And and I understand that, you know, it becomes, it's more than just a dietary thing. There's, you know, other reasons why people go that route. What I know, you know, about being vegan is like, if you're going to have a vegan diet, you better make sure that you're doing it totally right or else there will to be getting the fat soluble vitamins, the B vitamins, the iron, the omegas. It's very hard. I don't have vegans in my practice that stay. 95% of the vegans who come into my practice switch over. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're sick. Yeah. They're sick. And they've been to every other doctor. And at some point you have to ask them, is it worth your teeth falling out? Is it worth you having osteoporosis and horrible dentition and losing all your I went to the point where you said, you know, no. I think that, so when I discovered through that blood lab that my fur tones were that low, in all the biology that I've studied over the years and just paying attention really to everything from a very open mind. And again, like I'm super plant-based, non-GMO, organic, all that stuff. But I had come to this conclusion because I'm in the path of like, you know, I'd like to get pregnant in the next three years. If that's, you know, part get of it. on board, you better do it. And let yeah. me tell you, you will be calling me and you will say, holy shit. They do not tell you about these massive design flaws of all day nausea and fatigue, but whatever. Oh no. I, well, you posted something recently on Instagram that I read and I was like, you are just bad ass one because I can't even imagine. And I want to talk about that a little bit because, you know, pregnancy hormones, it's, it's a, that's a big deal. And it, it you become a whole nother human, I imagine. I mean, I don't know yet, but hundred percent, you will know. Yeah. What I'm kind of picking up here is that yes, plant-based being plant heavy is important. Your micronutrients, magnesium, all this stuff. But it seems so if you are incorporating grass fed, you know, clean sourced meats into your diet, that's plant-based or heavily plant-based I'm not saying you have to eat a lot or every day. I don't, we know, but just incorporating, I feel like there's more, it optimizes health stronger than if it was just plant-based. We were designed to eat 
animal products. We were designed that way. We have canine teeth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The ability for us to get nutrients, the absorbability of plants is around 15% when it comes to nutrients, the absorbability of animal-based products is over 50. That's amazing. Individuals have to decide what is right for them. And if they tune out the propaganda, Mm -hmm. they will see how they feel. I mean, me, before I got pregnant, I was largely carnivore. Okay. And I didn't feel great when I ate it, when I ate a ton of vegetables, I added in micronutrients through foods like makia berry powder or green powder Mm -hmm. in terms of fiber. I had no trouble going in the bathroom. I didn't have a very high fiber diet. I felt that it didn't make me feel great. I mean, of course, an N of one is essential, but I was macrobiotic and vegan for a long time. Oh, you were so interesting. Yeah. And I got really sick. I was an athlete. I was training at altitude and I got really sick. Wow. And as soon as I switched over to chicken and it was really hard for me to do, I started packing on muscle. My performance was through the roof. Yeah. You know? It's undeniable. So when I found out that I was anemic, I was like, listen, I'm already ready to go. And it was weird for a couple of days, just the concept of it. But after, honestly, after a couple of days, my body was, I felt it saying thank you to me. It's really interesting. You know, people will have their, their thoughts and their emotions about this, but my goal and having you, who's an expert in this is just to say like, do what you think is best for you, but understand the science behind everything. That's the most important thing. So, and if you're not feeling, so I get vegans and vegetarians who come into my practice and largely convert over, Mm -hmm. they're not feeling well. They come into my practice and they don't feel well and they've exhausted all other options. If you are not feeling well and you have certain dietary habits, it's time to change. And it doesn't mean that 2% of the population will do great being vegan or vegetarian, about 2%. Okay. And if you're one of those 2%, go for it, but you have to be really smart and know that, you know, I've taken care of hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of patients and in my fellowship at the bedside of a lot of dying people, hundreds of dying people. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you when you see the muscle wasting and the falls that lead to pneumonia or hospital acquired infections, it's tremendous. And it really changes your view. Mm-hmm. about longevity and when you are in your midlife, yeah, how yeah. those decisions impact the trajectory of your aging. That's important. Yeah. I, I'm someone who is so passionate about ex- extending health span. So it's like, yeah. when I'm 60. I really want to be 40. And my diet is really geared towards what I call ultimately it's cellular health, right? So there's, there is an element of diet, my diet where I'm thinking about body composition. I'm like my shoulders, my butt, but primarily it's like cellular health to extend health span, to be cognitively on fucking fire when I'm in the later decades of my life. And I believe that it's possible wrinkles, all that stuff. I'm a make of pro. Like this is my, I believe that your diet is such a major factor. And then I also believe in the mindset part, which we are so going to tap into and I'm really excited about, but I think it's super important to, to pay attention to this stuff. And that kind of bridges me to where I want to go next with you. And it really connects to what you were just saying about your patients who come in, who are sick, who are vegans or vegetarians. But I want to talk about blood labs and just, I think that it's, you know, it seems like this kind of almost like this fancy far out almost extreme thing to do to get like a comprehensive blood lab, but yet it's to not know your numbers. Again, using myself as an example, if I did the basic blood lab, iron thyroid, like not even a full thyroid panel, I would be potentially in trouble right now. And so I think vitamin D, I would love for you to just kind of speak to blood labs a little bit, if you don't mind. And yeah, it's a lot of labs. I will tell you that finding an integrative practitioner is essential when it comes to doing a comprehensive panel. Mm -hmm. A lot of Western, and I'm a Western trained physician, will just look at screening levels, for example, iron, like you said, they don't necessarily look at the more nuanced, like, um, ferritin, which is of course a storage form of iron, the thyroid panel, TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone is typically all that's looked at as opposed to thyroid antibodies, free T3, free T4, reverse T3. Those are all necessary, right? You know, at my clinic, we run multiple full panels on everything, full cholesterol panels and our full hormones, 
We also do a Dutch test, which is the urinary byproducts of hormones. We always screen full thyroid, you know, and then if we think that there's an occult infection, there's obviously more to it than that, right? If they have, we think that they have Epstein-Barr or Lyme, right. some heavy metals. You know, I see a lot of operators in my practice. Mm-hmm. So I work with special operations. That group, you always look for occult infections yeah. or heavy metals, environmental right. exposures, things like that. So just in general, I mean, you think, I mean, it's obviously, it's a good idea, even if it's once a year to get a more comprehensive blood lab through, you know, a functional integrative doctor. A hundred percent. Yeah. At least once a year. At least once a year. Yeah. Oh, I'm on like the three year or three, you know, I try and do it like every three months, but again, and Mm -hmm. I may, maybe I am extreme, but I am someone who. I want to continuously monitor, you know, my, myself essentially like my vitamin D levels. What are they doing? Vitamin D regulates over a thousand of your genes. I want to know what that level is so I can make sure that, you know, I'm on the right path. It's definitely essential. And then also when you're interpreting the results, the range in normal labs is, and just what I'd mentioned, a range, Yes. right? So it could be from... If you look at vitamin D, if you are within 30 to 100, you're considered within range. It's looking at the optimal ranges. So for my patients, it's 60 to 80. My free T3 that I like to see for patients is 3.5 to 4.5. Okay. Not one or 2.5 for free T3. And really finding a physician that has a concept of where people, based on their experience, feel the best. Sure. is going to be different than just looking at, at the interpretation that the lab gives you. Sure. So how do you clone yourself and put yourself all around? Educate. <laughs> Educate. You know, I am so lucky. My practice is very unique in that I take care of leaders in the community. Mm. So my practice is full of people that are looking to optimize themselves to remove any physical issue so they can go out and crush. I mean, from commander Navy SEALs to women leaders, to executives, to CEOs, to lawyers. I mean, I take care of incredible individuals. Incredible. I love that you just said that because one of the things that was so badass when I first was like going down the Dr. Gabrielle Lyon rabbit hole, you talked about, you know, it's not just like special operations, but you were interested in elite performers. You could be a housewife. You could be a librarian. It's just oh, yeah. the mindset, which is yeah. so aligned with Black Belt Beauty. I coach mindset performance coaching. That's the same thing that I look for in the people that I coach, right? So I'm not trying to be your motivator to go to the gym. It's like people who are already on that path of, you know, how do I continuously like turn this best into better every day? So I really want to talk about that because I know that mindset is a huge Thank you. Yes. Um, and it's so exciting to me. So do you, you have, um, four fundamental qualities to crush life. Can we talk about that? Yeah. And you know, I came up with these qualities as I see these individuals, right. From CrossFit athletes to just all these individuals that I see. And I saw this common thread, right. It's not just the Navy SEALs or the Green Berets or the Rangers that I see, but there were these four fundamental qualities. And if you look at them, you know, in no particular order, there is number one is experience, right? The ability to learn from your personal experience. People always in, in our society where they focus on where they're strong, right? I don't give a fuck where you're strong. I want to know where you're weak. I want to know where you fail. I want to know your Achilles heel. When they know their weaknesses, and they know that they can experience things through them, they gain this ability to learn. I see that over and over and over again. They don't stay on as a really great patient and friend and mentor of mine, Jason Redman, who is an incredible war hero, right? Talks about moving off the X. And it's really about moving quickly through your experience and knowing that you can handle it. So that's number one. So really learning from experience. The other quality that I see all the time is execution. They don't talk about it. They, they just do it. There's no, it's not, I'm going to wait till I feel I'm going to do it. Right. You just do it. You don't, you don't wait for the sun to be at a certain angle or the wind to be. <laughs> yeah. 
you, you know, for me, for me, right, being pregnant and sick, I'm still getting my ass to the gym. You know, excuse me while I go throw up in the back, but just give me a second. I got it. You, know? <laughs> you are a queen. I love that. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> you will be in between spots. I'm like, just give me a second. You know? <laughs> Brutal. Oh, Brutal. The other components are there's emotional maturity. Mm-hmm. It's the capacity of knowing you know, and there's actually way more than four qualities. So these are just a a couple. The capacity of knowing when to react versus when to respond, really having your internal dialogue really buttoned up. And that is absolutely essential. You don't let your day get ruined or you aren't kind of taken for a ride. You are in control of your experience, right? It is a level of emotional maturity. No matter what, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. I'm a huge advocate of, I express it on the podcast all the time, but emotional resiliency. It's just like, and and it's something that you can, I feel you can continuously develop in your life, but you got to pursue it. And we're going to talk about that, but yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah. And then another quality, and I'll just give you another one is leadership. It's internal leadership. So this is another, it's probably about 10 qualities, if not more, but there are really strong qualities in terms of like having emotional leadership, whatever you say you are asking other people to do, you're doing yourself, right? You're fucking showing up. Yeah. You are leading from the front. You are executing and exhibiting this kind of behavior that has a moral compass. You have transparency within yourself. You have honor within yourself. You have an ethos that you follow. Mm-hmm. So when things go awry or when individuals or opportunities come up, you know exactly is that you are laser like focused. Is that in alignment with what I believe and who I am as a human being? So solid. This has got to be. I mean, obviously, for you to be, it's got to be an interesting exchange with um, you know these clients, these patients of yours, because I feel like you're somebody who exudes everything that you just put out. So it's like what you're seeing in them. I feel like you are leading your life, you know, from and with. So, but that's got to be so fun because as you're saying these things to me, I feel a connection to everything that you're saying is like, that's not only is it what I do believe in, in a lot of ways I am living from, but it's really like, when I think of this next level version of myself, that's always baiting me and baiting me. I have a great relationship with her. She is fucking everything you just said. She doesn't hesitate. She's resilient. She, you know, she's composed she's just so capable. And I just, I feel like to go back to what I was saying, it's gotta be a fun exchange and it's got to fortify you in those ways too. Right. When you're, yeah. It's incredible. I mean, I I'm lucky because I have an incredible teammate, right? Who you choose in your life is probably the most important person. I mean, I, my partner is a Navy SEAL. It's a 10 year elite level opera, right? It is about having a team. It is about cultivating positivity. It is about execution, adaptability, emotional maturity, leadership. It's about all these things within our interpersonal dynamic, right? Yeah. And that is is absolutely essential. With my patients, nobody's perfect. The top of the top go through things. The SEALs, the Green Berets, they all, the executives, the celebrities, the, the housewives, yeah. all of them go through things, but it's about how quickly they move off that X. How quickly do they move through that experience, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Because the, the challenge, you go to the challenge, but inevitably, largely, oftentimes, health challenges, things that are unexpected come to you no matter what. Yes. Really what I work with my patients on is also building them up for the moments when that happens. Mm -hmm. How do we go through it? How do we move through? What is the internal dialogue? You know, and I'm with them every step of the way. I mean, I talk to a lot of my patients on the weekends or in the evenings, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not about being available from nine to five. It's, you know, I interview patients before they get admitted to my practice. Right. Because they're people I want to take care of, right? We probably like you go through a vetting process. Yes, absolutely. You have to. It's an exchange. It's a relationship. And especially if you're someone who is very passionate and you know that you're going to show up 200% of the time, you know, that you're not, that is not something you take lightly or you just kind of hand out, water down. I'm like, no, you need to make sure that the person is going to be right there with you 200%. Absolutely. Being a good physician is not just about being a good clinician. It is about recognizing 
patterns of illness, but it, but being a great physician is about recognizing individuals. What are their strengths, who they are, who the fuck is sitting in front of you, knowing where they're weak, knowing where they're strong, really getting to understand them. And then you utilize that to leverage them to become the best version of themselves. So I take care. I'm the person behind the scenes Mm -hmm. to make sure that they're all, you know, buttoned up, washed up, ready to go, just lead the next challenge, lead individuals to their next challenge. So dope. That is so amazing. And you're hitting it from, I feel them all the important angles to be hitting it from, you know, when you say you're setting them up for that, because it's like the, oh shit moments, right? Like they're going to happen. Here's a quick example. The other day, car gets towed, right? I'm getting ready to go train. I got this whole busy day and now fuck, my car is towed. Go outside and for sure, it's like started day. I'm frustrated, but I'm very, I'm very self-aware. And so I'm watching myself the whole fucking time. Like it's really, I made a whole podcast episode about this and I'm, it's, and then, so, you know, I got to go and get my car towed, the whole thing. And I, how I framed it in the episode is frustration is sitting right next to me in the car and I'm watching it and I'm allowing it because I'm human and I'm allowing it to be there. Right. So I'm not really about this, like dismissal of, you know, emotion, because I feel like that's not real. We have emotions for a reason, but it's all about keeping things in check. So I I go and I got to pay $500. Awesome. You know, literally paid that shit. And then stood there and I was like waiting for them to bring my car. And I was like, all right, frustration. This is where you leave now because I got a whole fucking day in front of me and you're not taking me on the joy ride that I know you would like to take me on. Um, It's done. Like it's already fucking done. And what's so cool about that for me is first of all, just to be able to watch myself in that emotional stage, keep me in check. And then, and what I'm really interested in is like closing the gap more and more. Yeah. Oh shit. Moments come, right? Because there's no denying that there, that's not the last time it's going to come, but how long does it take? You know, when somebody pisses you off, somebody cuts you off in traffic, I watch myself like, and I'm aggressive, but I can see I'm like, you know, like I want to close that gap to as small as I can, you know, and that's something that I'm constantly kind of working towards. Not like there's an issue, but it's just, I think it really works with what you were just saying. It's like emotional resiliency and being able to, you know, handle these things and, and, and not just handle them. I think it's like how you handle them. And that's really something to me. Absolutely. So do you see what you did? You utilized a stimulus to flip it, to be an experience as an exercise. Yeah. Right? It was a real exercise for you. And those are the individuals that excel in health and wellness in life. They don't get wrapped up in it. They have a stimulus and then a response. So you utilize that as a learning experience for you to get better. And that's exactly what I see with the operators and those that are at the high level of their game and that are actually working towards getting there. Exactly that, exactly that behavior. Yeah, well, that makes me feel good. I'm like, should I? <laughs> there you go. You got it. <laughs> Can I ask you, is there anything that's like, that you haven't spoke to maybe yet? That's something that's really inspiring you in your practice right now, or just in general? Like, I just love asking that question. I think that the, the pregnancy has definitely been a challenge. I am a very type of motivated, successful businesswoman. And I can only tell you what it's like to be operating at 30%. And the body is doing whatever it wants to do. And I'm still managing to travel and speak, but in between, you know, I'm sleeping, Shane's driving me, you know, we're, we're going to events and it's really, really hard. And I'm not an individual to make excuses. I'm really an individual to execute. Yes. And pray. I mean, listen, I've torn both hamstrings, broken a shoulder, torn the other one. I will still get it done. (laughs) Pregnancy on the other hand is totally different, right? I mean, you are literally so sick that it's been a, a big challenge. I mean, I think that I've turned a corner. I mean, I'm doing this today, but you know, I slept till 10 o'clock. I went to bed at nine for other people. It would not be a big deal, but you know, I have two major talks with huge visibility coming up things that I have to do 
you know, a whole list of things I had to execute. And I think that going through that challenge is very humbling. So that's just been something I haven't really talked about to any kind of extent. And my partner being a SEAL is, is not here. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm doing it by myself, right? Right. I'm I'm looking to move offices. I'm relocating. I'm doing all these things. And it's, it's a lot when you don't feel great. That is it. Sure. And, and I think that there's got to be something interesting about the fact that, you know, when you are like you broke the, the injuries that you just mentioned, you know, it's one thing when you're, you're dealing with that, like I got, I'm hurt my shoulder, but whatever, I'm going to push through it, but I'm going to do push ups with the other shoulder. Right. Or I'm going to do a one arm pull up or whatever I'm going to do. Right. right you work but you're going to fucking get it done. But I think it's got to be very interesting and something that you have to take into consideration, even from a primal kind of way where you're like, this ain't just, this ain't about me. Like yeah. I am considering my little human in here. And so you kind of, that's where I imagine I think it's like one part, I, this is all like just imagining, like it's one part of the physiological thing that's happening where it's like, oh, I feel like shit, but it's also like, you know what I would, I know that's better for me to eat this because I understand what, you know, is good for my body, but fuck man, this is just what, so, okay, baby, like let's, you yeah. know, yeah. It's, it's interesting. And I think that it's, it's an interesting aspect that a lot of people don't talk about, or maybe a lot of women that are in my position doing what I'm doing, don't necessarily talk about. And that's, it's been an interesting experience for me. Yeah. And I don't know what I would do it all over again. Oh, I Bring it, you know, like it's so what you do it, you know, and then it's, and then, so it then becomes learning how to embrace that challenge on a daily basis. Right. So it's, it's unrelenting. Right. And yeah. then it becomes a, a total shift. So it's a whole new experience. It's so an amazing good. experience, but yes, yeah, so that's kind of the, the big thing. And in terms of my practice, I am, it's really scaling it down. Okay. So it is, I am, you know, I'll only take new patients for a certain amount of time. Okay. Yeah. I'm really kind of scaling it down and then just providing a different level of care for individuals. Yeah. So I will be changing my practice model. Okay. Well, that's exciting. You've yeah. got a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, you know what? It's so funny. Everyone says, oh man, you're handling it so easy. And in my mind, it doesn't feel like a lot. I do want to talk about one thing that I think is so important. You know, the fact that you were a fitness competitor, you love to lift weights. Can I talk about that a little bit? Just because I still think that women, to focus on women, have this kind of fear about the whole getting bulky and <laughs> muscle and iron and like, you know, by meaning weights. And I admit that I used to be one of them because I was already naturally strong. And my brothers would always be like, fucking lift weights, like, you know, and lift heavy, not like the two, five pounds. And I have to say, like, when I finally listened to my brothers and like the protein and the weights, the body came out and not just the body, but like, I'm already strong. I'm sure you capture that, but this just took that strength and that resilience and all the stuff we've been talking about to another level. So it's one part, can you speak to the importance of just, you know, weightlifting, even particularly yeah, with women? Yeah. I mean, so really, as I spoke about uh, muscle being the organ of longevity, it is your metabolic currency and it changes as you age. Okay. The best insurance policy you have yes. is muscle tissue, right? Muscle mass. It is hard to get and hard to maintain, especially as you age. Lifting and putting out exertion and really a lot of effort with compound movements, a squat, bench press, deadlift are all longevity. And if you look at the individuals running on the treadmill at the gym, especially the women, you likely don't want any of their bodies. They're likely all skinny fat. And that, when you look at the end game, you, that, you don't want that to have to be you at 70. You don't want to still be running on that treadmill. You'd like to be able to be functional, carry your groceries, be strong. And, and when you talk about changing body composition, the whole point is being under muscled. And the way to develop muscle and the way to develop internal strength, as well as physical strength, is to push your body in a way that perhaps you haven't. And if you ask me, that is muscle. And, you know, we talked about earlier the importance of muscle in terms of fatty acid metabolism, basal metabolic rate, and just total caloric intake. But it's also when you lift weights, it allows for an anti-inflammatory response to happen. 
So there's an initial inflammation that happens. And then these myokines generate an anti-inflammatory response. And that is also key and essential. And I've also heard that leg strength is connected to brain health. All strength is connected and walking speed is connected to wellness. You know, you can't get out of, no one gets out of life alive, but the way in which you do it is the most important thing. Sure. Yeah. So ladies, lift those weights. And listen, have you ever seen a woman get big? I have never seen a woman get big. That's bold. what I really wanted you to speak to, especially because, and again, like I was that woman where I was like, no, I build muscle. Listen, I'm a mesomorph. Like we, my family, we got genes and gratefully, like we, we upregulate them. We fucking use our genes. So we, yes, we kind of won the gene lottery in some ways, but we put them to use. So they work for us. But me being someone who can put on muscle you know, it's fucking hard. Like I'm kind of, you know, it's like, I'm focusing on bigger ass. Like ladies, that shit is not easy. It's a combination of your diet. You have to be eating to grow. Right. And then there's the training, but it's not like if you go and you do some squats and deadlifts and you're, you know, and you're picking up more than five pounds, like all of a sudden you're going to get whatever bulky even fucking means, but it's still a thing that, you know, women, I think, think about, but I, I really wanted to talk about that with you being someone that, you know, obviously your practice, what you're focused on, someone who, you know, you were a competitor and an athlete. So you could really speak to that concept of like, it's bullshit, basically. It is bullshit. And don't be lazy just because you haven't done it and you haven't experienced it. You can't let that internal dialogue, that quote, fear internal dialogue run your life, right? Right. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Um, and, And that's being aware of your own internal perception of things is key. No one's going to get big. It takes a lot of fucking effort, yeah. you know, to do this. Right. Perfect. Okay, cool. So the last things that I want to do is I have these rapid fire words where I'm just going to shoot them at you. And then you could just, you know, tell me what comes to your mind when I express them. Ready? <laughs> Ready. Ready, girl. Go. Okay. Challenge. Bring it. Failure. Welcome it. Success. Every damn day. Love. Shane Kronstadt. You know he's going to listen to this. <laughs> he's the best ever. I love that. Authenticity. Showing up every day. Transparency. I love it. Okay. Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, I just want to say this publicly with so much reverence. You know, when I reached out to you, and ask you to be on my podcast. You know, I can imagine you get DMs and messages all the time and you were just so right there. Like, yes, I would love to support. I love to support strong women. And that really said something to me because it's one thing to be the badass that you are and you put yourself out there and all the things that you share. But what I really, really appreciate the most in all humans is, is that realness and that kind of um, human connection And so it was immediate with you. And I am just so grateful that I've had this time and that we are connected. And I am just saying this, that I am, I'm, I want to be your friend. (laughs) You are just, you're awesome. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your time, your energy, and while you're pregnant and you've got all this stuff going on. I am so grateful. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for having the courage to ask me. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can you please direct our audience? to where they can stay up to date with you? They can find me on my website, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Also Instagram. I'm really active Instagram, Dr. Gabrielle. Oh, that's, yeah, that's at Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Twitter, same handle. Um, All of your listeners should be following the foundation that I work with for special operators. It's called Task Force Dagger. They can find information on that. That's on Instagram. They can find it on my Instagram profile. And if anybody wants me to speak, if you'd like me to come to talk to your company or your business, Eagle Rise Speakers Bureau. Amazing. Perfect. All of that will be in the show notes. So oh. I will make sure that everyone knows how to stay connected with you. So thank you so, so much again. And I look forward. I would love to do it again at another time. Thank you so much. Wait. Thanks for taking the time to check out this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please share it with your friends. Head over to iTunes, subscribe to this podcast, rate it, leave me an honest review. Let's connect. I am so excited to do that in this space. 
and really create content that elevates your mind in support of your best performance in life. You can find me on Instagram at Black Belt Beauty. I'm active there every single day and I look forward to connecting with you all. So thanks again and I'll catch you on the next one.